Hello, my fellow Ripplers. This is Chris Miles, your cash flow expert and anti-financial advisor. Welcome out for a wonderful show, a show that's for you and about you. Those you work so hard for your money and you're ready for your money to start working harder for you now. You want to work because you want to, not because you have to. You want that freedom, that cash flow, that prosperity today, not 30 or 40 bazillion years from now, but right now. So you have that life that you love, doing what you love with those that you love. But guys, it's so much more than just having a lot of money, right? It's so much more than just being rich. It's about living a rich life. It's about creating a ripple effect in the lives of others. And as a rippler, you are here to bless more lives with the gifts and the resources and everything that you've been given to help more people. And so, guys, I'm excited to be a rippler with you. Thank you for letting my ripple effect extend through you guys as you've been binging and sharing this with other people. I, again, I love that the show it keeps growing and growing all because of you. And it's not just about growing, but it's more importantly about you guys taking action and getting real results. Here's a quick reminder, check out our website, moneyripples.com. There's great blogs on there if you want to see other videos of what we're doing here with these same episodes. You can also go to our YouTube page. And of course, we got our free ebook, Beyond Rice and Beans, that you can download for free today. So check it out. All right, so today I've got a special guest here. You know, uh, you know I get different things pitched to me here and there, right? And you guys know this, like if I bring somebody on, I don't bring people that are posers, right? I bring on people that I feel are going to be really valuable for you and actually give you real value. And you know what? This is no exception. I think you guys are going to get, especially if you're, if you have a business, you're going to get tickled by this completely. So, so tickle, tickle. No, I was just kidding. <laughs> so, all right. So anyways, without further ado, I want to introduce you to Justin Maxwell. Now, Justin Maxwell is one of the founders of Big Life Financial. Uh, he's a research and development tax specialist. He's only been an entrepreneur since 2016 because prior to that, he was a PE teacher, right? Now he has a master's degree and he's very passionate about helping business owners save as much as legally possible on taxes. Now what he really does is help business owners understand and implement the R&D or the research and development tax incentive into their business, which most of us, including myself, I even have my own stuff looked at with them as well, trying to find extra taxes that maybe you can even get back in your pocket today. Some of these people have saved anywhere from 10 to 30,000 a year, and sometimes been into the hundreds of thousands a year. So all for just from this little cool tax credit that most accountants don't even tell you about. So Justin, welcome to our show. Yeah, thank you for having me, Chris. I'm really excited to be here. I appreciate you letting me come on. So tell me, like, how did you go from going from something as exciting as a PE teacher to something as boring as taxes? Like, how did that yeah. happen? <laughs> Yeah, I love health. I love movement. I really am passionate about it. But I came to a point in my PE teaching career where I was just like, I'd hit a wall of like, I felt like I progressed to a point where I couldn't progress anymore. Like I could still mm -hmm. improve, but I didn't think I could bring more, any more value or help improve my own self. I wanted to look for more. Yeah. So I started searching more. I took classes on like real estate investing and taxes and retirement accounts. And it eventually ended up me here. So it's kind of a wow. different unique path, but yeah, it's, it, I wanted to reach more people. I wanted to do more. I just felt I hit a wall in PE teaching that I couldn't surmount by staying there. Yeah. And what is it you do exactly? Because you're not actually an accountant, but you are referring to accounting firms, correct? Right, correct. So we aren't, I'm not an accountant. I'm just a, a strategist or a specialist that understands the research and development tax incentive at a pretty high level, more so yeah. than most would. And I work with a team of accountants that this is all they do. They only do research on tax incentives. They're not filing your taxes. They're not helping you get deductions. They're only doing incentives and credits. Right. And so tell us, what is this tax credit exactly? I know there's been a very rare CPAs that even bring this up, right? right. Very rarely will you hear about this. Tell us, like, how did this come to be and why does it exist in the first place? Yeah, so back in 1980, the United States had lost its stronghold on the auto industry. Japan had become the world leader in that economy. Right. Just like Gung Ho the movie, right? Right, <laughs> Michael yep, Keaton. exactly. Yeah. And the government was trying to think of different ways to keep U.S. mines on U.S. soil, to make U.S. businesses more successful, so not losing their foothold, not only the auto industry, but as a whole in all of business. Yeah. And so they created the tax incentive, the research development tax incentive. It wasn't called that then, but that's what it was. And they made it so that it would incentivize businesses to invent, to hire new people, to keep people on board, to promote entrepreneurship, and just mm. to help businesses want to invent, like have the desire to, even if they were failing in that endeavor, at least they were giving, having the financial backing from the government that would say, we're gonna give you a percentage of stuff for your efforts 
because they know that if people are trying, they're going to figure out new ways to do stuff, whether it's a new product or a new system, just a better way that's going to keep the United States globally on the scale of being in charge of the economy. Right. Create a big incentive to, to, well, really to innovate, right? To innovate and create and be the leaders in that way, right? Yeah. Yeah. Correct. That's cool. Yeah. And that's one thing I love about capitalism anyways. I mean, obviously capitalism should already give you self-interest enough to say, hey, if we're the best, we can make more. But the government said, hey, let's incentivize even further. Let's make sure that they're not just surviving, but we can actually thrive. And let's give them some tax breaks to get them to be the best, right? Right, correct. And it's that period when it was created in 1981, mm -hmm. it wasn't like permanently on the tax code. It was more like a test. Like, let's see mm. if this works. Let's see if it helps our businesses. Let's see if people take advantage of this. And so from 1981 to 2015, that's what it was. Like it was expiring. It was being tweaked. It was being changed. And it was mm -hmm. only being used by big business. Like no small businesses could keep up with it. It would have cost a ton of money for CPAs to ever do that. And so that's what happened. Cool. So tell us like, who does this actually apply to? Like what kind of business owners would get the best benefit from this tax credit? Yeah. So it doesn't apply to everyone. That's a really important thing to realize. Like it can apply to everyone. If like business is going really above and beyond and like trying to invent or create a new process or system, they just have to make sure they're documented with data and stats and making sure it's a hard science. But yeah. the business is that it's always going to like, probably you're almost always going to qualify unless there's like extenuating circumstances are people that are in like manufacturing or engineering or dentistry or medicine or mm -hmm. agriculture where it's hard science stuff already. Yeah. And so the stuff they're doing, the government doesn't really have to investigate right because like, they already know what a dentist does. Like they know that that is hard science. They know they're providing custom solutions. There's not really much investigation on their part. If you don't fall in one of those categories, then you're going to have to, provide a little bit more data and structure mm -hmm. and like go to your testing stuff. It can't just be like a survey or what do you think about yeah. how we're doing this or just randomly throw it out there. They want you to be actually testing stuff with data and that could be a product. It could be a process or it could be a system. Yeah. Let's go into that a little bit. Like what are those products or those systems? Like what kind of things would that look like for different businesses? Just an example sake, like, we have a lot of success with dentists. So mm -hmm. when they are doing custom stuff on their clients, mm -hmm. they're each time they're looking for different ways to like solve a problem, whether it's a cavity or they're looking for different innovative ways to do it, or they're purchasing like 3D equipment that's going to help innovate mm -hmm. their systems to make it so they're not having to outsource it. So it makes right. the processes become more quicker within the office. So, so it even improves improve the system, practice. like actually right. it speeds up the process and that kind of thing. Yeah. And so improving, inventing a new system, or just like trying to enhance or create something that's going to make it better. Right. Even if it's your own product or your own machinery or... Right. It could be, right? It could even just be like, because we've had some success with like consultants and speakers. It could be mm -hmm. like you improving the way you are developing yourself too, because you are the product and you are the way you are speaking. And it's and so like taking classes on yourself or... Personal development. Way. Right. Correct. So yeah, training. Training, yeah, I was going to say training or like learning ways or even just going through the process of trying to, you know, if they're a speaker, right? Like going through the process of trying to refine the speech, make it better, almost like a comedian does, right? Like when they try to refine their punchlines and how they deliver a joke and that sort of thing. That takes hours of right. practice and so forth. Correct. Yes. So it doesn't, don't get caught up in it has to be like a product that you're producing or like what we mm -hmm. talked about the auto industry earlier. It doesn't have to be a car that you're trying to enhance to make better. It can be yeah. a system or a process within your business. I think people get confused about that. And I think that's one of the reasons CPAs don't necessarily know much about it. Yeah. Or recommend it. Right. Well, yeah, obviously. And you can get pretty creative with it. I know we did a pr little process together as well, asking questions. I thought, oh, I didn't realize that could be counted. And especially if you're a consultant, like we said before off the air, you've got employees that are doing some of this work for you, not you personally, but you're paying somebody do this kind of work, you also get to write that off as well. Right. Yeah, correct. It's really important. Like if you have a good chunk of employees, there's even a higher chance you're going to qualify for more money. Cause that if you're a one man show, you have to do a lot of volume to mm -hmm. do it. It's a lot of research development volume, which yeah. makes it harder for you. Cause that you are only making so much, but if you have right. employees, the money you're paying them goes towards the credit as well. So that's a big help if you have employees in your business. Yeah. At what point, like, you know, tax bill wise or, you know, that people end up owing or paying each year, like at what point does it make sense? Because if they're not making a whole lot of money, this probably doesn't make as much sense, correct? 
Right. Yeah. So you, you have to be profitable and you have to be paying about $10,000 a year at a minimum in taxes. It's kind of a pay to play type of a system with the government in this one. So but if you are at six that figures, point, six or seven figures in your business for sure. Right. Yeah. The more you're paying taxes, the more you're making, the probably the more you're going to qualify for. Makes sense. Right. And who would it not be for? Like what kind of industries you say, no, I already know you're probably not going to find anything. Like who would that be? So if you're like the middleman on it, like you're taking a product and then you just sell the product again, that's going to be mm. very difficult for you. So if you're just taking off the shelf stuff and off the shelf again, just like the middle person on that part, you're going to have a hard time. Like in sales that. or network yeah. marketing, those kind of things. Right. Network Direct marketing sales. would be difficult, be difficult or like just an example, not talking negatively about like metal Luca type people like that yeah. type of product, but taking a product and just reselling it. That gotcha. type of doesn't work. Yeah. I imagine for them, like the only thing they could possibly do is if they're like doing like a lot of training of their teams, right. things yeah. like that, systems but more. It, right. The, the, the system would be, and they'd have to have a pretty big team. So yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Have a lot of volume to make that worthwhile right. for sure. Gotcha. Cool. What's the process they go through if they want to like go and talk to you about that and say, Hey, I want to know if this actually works for me because, well, because I mean, yeah. What does that look like? Yeah. So we like to do like, a conversation over the phone that just says like preliminary like questions. We'll just make sure if you're like, if you're paying that $10,000 in taxes, we'll just ask you a few things. And if you are, if we feel like you're on, if you have the potential to qualify, we'll have you fill out a qualification application type thing. And this whole process I'm about to describe is completely free because mm -hmm. it won't cost you anything out of your pocket except your time. And we understand your time is valuable. So we like to keep it as short as possible, but it's just, we fill out an application that the questions are going to draw out like different activities that you're doing in your business that would qualify for incentives and credits and research and development. And then we are going to take that. We'll give it to our CPAs. They'll analyze it in about a week or two. You'll have a number if you qualify and for how much. And then mm. at that point, if you want us to move forward with amending the taxes and getting that money back, then we'll have to discuss how the fee structure works and, and that process. You guys just but, take a cut of that. Like that's what's well, kind of cool. So if you don't save money, it doesn't cost anybody out of pocket anything. Right, correct. So if there's no money there's no found, risk. no out of pocket. If we do find something and he wants to go get it, we take a percentage of that. So it's not even, you don't have to pay. Essentially, you're just paying out of what we find you. So it's just yeah. money found and you're getting, you pay us out of that money that we find. That's awesome deal. That's great. There's no risk when you do it that way. I love it. Right. So give us an example of somebody like maybe like a dentist or somebody who has used this strategy before. Like what did it do for them? Dentists, we've had a ton of success with, but just like two weeks ago, we got a partnership, $74,000 back into their business. I mean, $74,000 that was not going to be coming back. So that's a lot of money. Like they can go on vacation, they can hire someone else, they can buy a piece of equipment. Like that's a good solid amount of money that can benefit them either peace of mind wise or bet business wise. We've yeah. had success with like, this is a little bit extreme example, but we had a real estate brokerage in Minnesota that got back $800,000. We've had auto shops wow. get twenty five thousand dollars. Like it kind of it varies depending on the type of brokerage or the type of business you have. But mm -hmm. I get varies so wildly. But I would just really encourage people like if you think that this is applying to you, like just investigate it because it doesn't cost you anything. And mm -hmm. your CPA, there's like a five percent chance based on the stats and the data provided by the IRS that your CPA is even advising you to use this. So there's a really low chance you're using it. Right. That's awesome. I was actually going to ask about real estate people, like whether it's investors or professionals, sounds like there's even benefit there too. Yeah. So it has to come from the broker because all the volume of people they have, all the agents they have below them. If you're sure. an agent, it's going to be more difficult because you don't have enough people below you providing you money to be paid out. Yeah. But if you're like a flipper or like a house flipper, you'd have to do a lot of engineered plans and you'd have to be pretty mm. productive in your business because that engineering is research yeah. and development because everything of that. So if you're yeah. a flipper and you do lots of volume and you engineer a lot of, of your houses, it's not just like whip, step on a pig's type stuff, yeah. then you're going to have more success in finding this credit work for you. Fascinating. And I want to make a distinction here too. We're not writing things off. Like even with these dentists that got back 74,000, they were already writing off the salaries and, and all the things they were doing. This is an actual tax credit. This is in addition to everything you already written off. Right. Correct. That's a very important point. So deductions are lowering your tax liability. Credits is them paying you money for doing specific activities with your business. A lot of people like know the kid credit for having kids. Mm -hmm. the, the government just gives you money for having kids. Like it's yeah. very similar to that. You just have to meet the criteria for them to give you the money. Oh, I love it. Awesome. Well, if they want to go ahead and fill out that questionnaire and just kind of
that no risk assessment with you guys, how would they go about doing that? They go to tax.biglifefinancial.com and they can uh -huh. set up a free consultation there and they'll get a free ebook that will explain the process even further if they want more information. Awesome. Great. Yeah, guys, we'll put that in the show notes so they have the link there they can go click on. But yeah, I think that's huge. I was curious about it too. I've got an amazing CPA, but, and he even mentioned getting this tax credit, but I said, Hey, let's get some other sets of eyes looking at this to see what it really looks like. And it's a fascinating process. It really is. It's really cool. I hope anyone that's listening to business owner at least checks it out because the, it could be like that dentistry, the, the, those two dentists had no idea it existed. And now yeah. they have $74,000 coming to them. Like that wasn't going to be coming to them before. It's a huge relief to them, especially dentistry. They got hit, they got shut down by the COVID. So like, mm. if you are in that boat where you got shut down and you want more cash and this is a possibility, then let's definitely set something up. Yeah, I agree. Like that's the biggest thing that when we talk about you know, trying to get money accelerating, right? The best thing is, is if you don't lose it in the first place, it's awesome, you know, or you can get it back. Justin, I really appreciate your time today. This was great information. Everybody, again, reach out to Justin. We'll put the link in the show notes to you guys and do that assessment. But if you feel this is something that could really benefit you guys, do it, guys, because it's one thing to listen to this show. It's another thing to take action, and especially when it leads to real dollars in your pocket today. So, Justin, thank you so much today. Yeah, no problem. I really appreciate you letting me on, and I wish you guys the best, all your listeners and you as well. Absolutely. And everybody else, I hope you make a wonderful and prosperous week, and we'll see you later.